It's Travel Michigan. I'm Dave Lorenz, along with Michelle Grinnell. And Michelle, we have time for one more guest. We do, and we are going to talk about Christmas trees, which makes everybody happy. And Hmm. I will tell you that I recently noticed that one of the apartments in my complex has their Christmas tree up already. So it is certainly time to talk about Christmas trees. Um, And here to tell us all about it is Marsha Gray, who's the executive director of the Michigan Christmas Tree Association. So welcome back to the show, Marsha. Well, thank you. So let's start out. Dave and I were talking before we went on air about the history of Christmas trees. How did we end up every time this year putting a big old tree in our living room? Well, you, can, you, you certainly can say it is not a Hallmark holiday, can't you? Um, you know, this, the Christmas tree has, it has been a part of the, the celebration really before we even were celebrating Christmas. A lot of this really came from, like, pagan traditions of hanging greens in the winter. And then the Christians picked it up as, as a tradition that they wanted to embrace. And so you know that the first recorded, the first rec- record we have of a Christmas tree is more than 500 years ago, 1510. Um, and there was a record of a tree that was erected in Latvia um, by a, a, like a merchant's guild, and they, they put that tree up in the town square. And since then, it has just moved around the world, uh, really got popular um, in, in Germany and also in, in Victorian times in Great Britain. And that was brought right here to America, and it's really been a part of our celebration as far back as the, as the country. Just to prove that uh, I have learned some things about Christmas trees, I will ask you this question. Who was the first president to bring a Christmas tree into the White House? I know this answer. I, I know that. I, I, you're I, stumping me. Or I'm, look, I'm looking at my cheat sheet. I won't look at my cheat sheet. We'll let you tell everybody. 1853. Franklin Pierce. Don't feel too bad. Dave's looking at his cheat sheet. Yeah, too. I was just, I, okay. I have no idea. I'm like, I, I know have we no have idea. that. Yes. And, and, and it's a tradition that stands today. I mean, that's a, that's, a, that's a real honor to have your tree in the White House. And we've had some Michigan trees there. It's been a few years. It's time for us to get back. Yeah, so you never know. It's, that's kind of interesting. Well, actually, um, you know, it is interesting that, like in Lansing, uh, just recently we had the, the big uh, Christmas tree come from the UP again this year. Yep. And so that tradition continues in Lansing. Yeah. But, of course, for most of us, we're not bringing these, you know, 30, 40 feet tall Christmas trees into our our, uh, yard or our house. We're just trying to find a nice Christmas tree that's going to last throughout the season. So can you give us some tips on how to find, let's just start that way, how do we find uh, a real fresh Christmas tree in Michigan? Well, fortunately, we are in the right part of the world to be finding a beautiful tree. Uh, Michigan is the third largest producer, and you can find them at a cut-your-own type of farm, what we call choose and cut, or we can go out and have the experience and, and harvest your own. Or, obviously, you'll find retail lots, every community, or even things like the big box stores um, and other retail locations. So you have lots and lots of choices. And if you really want to uh, get a map and get some real detailed information, our website does have locator maps for farms and retail lots and lots of information about where you're headed before you get there. Well, you know, I think one of the things that's really changed since I was a little kid, at least where I live, is that when we were young back long ago, uh, we might uh, go out and cut our tree, which we did as a family, and we would go to a place, and basically it was a farm, and we would go out there, and we'd find a tree, and we'd drag it back, and that was it. Well, today, it's, uh, it can be a whole day experience and quite entertaining. You're right. Um, it's, it's, it's sort of an area that we call agritourism. Um, be, you know, you, in the fall, you like to go to the apple orchard. Well, it's not just picking apples anymore. It's maybe a hayride or some a petting zoo. And the same goes for the Christmas tree farms. Each one is different, but most will have, you know, maybe uh, they've got a big bonfire or hot chocolate or a hayride. There's usually activities and fun things to do around the prospect of going to get your Christmas tree. Uh, that is really why the locator that we have is really helpful. Not only can you figure out where you're going, you're going to learn a little bit about it before you get there. So you know, hey, I'm really, the kids really want to go on the hayride. Do you have a, do you have a wagon ride? It will tell you right there if that's available. Um, we really want to go to a, see a petting zoo or maybe a reindeer. It will tell you if they have that. So they're really trying to make it a fun outing for the family, um, a great experience, or really kind of wrap a, a tradition around not just getting the tree, but, but spending the day together. 
Well, and for young families who maybe have never done this before, um, you know, typically the the farms will have some extra saws there that you can mm-hmm. use, and they'll have uh, big measuring sticks and such, so you know you know what size the tree will be after you cut it down. But if you're um, not able to uh, cut the tree yourself, uh, how does that work? Well, uh, first of all, if they really want the farm experience, you can check ahead. Many will um, harvest for you, or they have pre-cut trees. Your other option would be to go to a retail lot, and there are plenty of those around, and all selling, you know, great Michigan-grown Christmas trees. Um, it's just a little less work, a little less bending over and stooping over and running that saw. Well, and of course, everybody's heard that that when you get the tree back to your house, if you kind of put a fresh cut on it, so to speak, mm-hmm. it'll be able to kind of suck up that water when you when you put the tree in the uh, in the stand. Yes. But uh, if you're not in a position, you know, you don't have a, a a saw at home or you just can't do that. Um, How much time do you have from the time it's cut to the time you you put the tree in the stand? You do have a little time. We don't want people getting in an accident, trying to hurry home to get it into the water, but I I would be thrilled to think people were concerned about that. Um, If you get a fresh cut at the retail lot, at the farm, um, get a nice fresh cut on it, you're fine for a number of hours. But we do want you head home get it in water don't leave it out for a day or two days and that sometimes happens if you're not going to display it right away maybe you're not going to put it up for a few days just get it in a bucket of water in the garage in the laundry room you know some place that's protected but where where you can get it in water uh, so we can start taking that up because that's what will keep your tree fresh for the entire season and i recall last year that there, we talked about the living christmas trees or the mm-hmm. trees that you don't cut but they st- stay with roots and you can replant them am i remembering that correctly yes you did and it's there there's a they have we have some real uh diehard fans of the living christmas tree it's not for everybody um they they are beautiful trees they're basically grown in pots so the roots are are all there attached in in the pot it's all compact together what you do have to keep in mind if you're going to do a tree like this it can't be in your house for more than a week or 10 days. Oh, really? I wondered about that. Yeah, so because, you know, it's warm. It says, oh, it's spring, and it starts to bud, it starts to grow, mm. and then you take it outside and you kill the poor thing. Or, or you can be like me and don't turn your heat on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if you're very frugal, like Dave, yes. if you're very frugal, you could do this. Yeah, yeah so that's really, it's, it's for someone who, you know, some people, you know, traditionally, we put our trees up for a week or two, and that was it, and you are good to go. Um, but we really don't re- recommend it for a longer period because, again, it, it thinks it's warm in spring and it's going to start budding, and then you're going to really zap it when you take it to the garage. Well, as you know, I think, Marsha, I, I live like out in the woods like a hermit in a little log home, <laughs> and uh, so it's easy for us to take care of our Christmas trees at the end of the season. We just make sure they're clean, and I actually strip the branches off and then kind of throw everything out in the woods, and it's fine. But Nature does its job, it right? It does, absolutely. But if people want to recycle their trees, um, uh, how do they do that? There are options. The first thing I would do, check with your, your city your waste pickup, whoever handles pickup, um, whether it's a private company or your municipality, find out what they do with the trees. Many have a separate pickup for Christmas trees. They chip them into mulch and they use them, you know, in the park, walkways, all kinds of great uses. And if they're doing that, great, just take it to the curb and they're going to take care of it, which is wonderful. If you find that they're not doing that and it does go to the landfill, it's going to biodegrade, just like the one you took out to the back 40, Dave. Mm, yeah. But, you know, if you really want to do something with it, there are options. Um, you know, it's interesting that we have people who sink their Christmas trees into rivers, ponds, mm. lakes as a fish habitat. Wow. It eventually breaks down. There are so many uses for Christmas trees. Um, there's lots and lots of options, but definitely check with whoever handles your waste removal and find out what they do with the trees. Yeah, and of course, you can find out about uh, this information and so much more by going to the website, mcta.org. And uh, it's all redesigned, by the way, so you'll find out more. Thank you, Marshall Gray, Executive Director, Michigan Christmas Tree Association, for joining us today. And before you know it, the show is all over with. We're out of time. So thank you for joining us, and we welcome you to join us next week right here on Travel Michigan, where your trip begins at michigan.org.